This video for section 44 of Hanson and Quinn's Greek and Intensive Course covers the genitive and dative of personal agent and the dative of means. You'll find this in Hanson and Quinn on page 125. And actually, these concepts are ones that I or Hanson and Quinn has already introduced to you. The genitive and the dative of personal agent we covered actually in the videos on the passive voice, but let me remind you. In the sentence, Paideoametha hupa tes helenes, we have the passive verb Paideoametha, we are being educated or we are educated. And if we want to answer the question in this sentence, by whom, who's educating us, we're going to use hupa and the genitive, hupa tes helenes. So this means we are educated by Helen and Hupa and the genitive is what we call the genitive of personal agent. In English, we indicate agent with the English preposition by and the person doing the verb. In Greek, we use the preposition hupa and the genitive of the person. So paideoamatha hupa tes helenes, we are educated by Helen. Genitive of personal agent hupa tes helenes. And that can work for personal agent in any tense and any passive form of verbs, you'll run into it everywhere. Sometimes with the perfect of a passive verb, pepideoamatha, you can get a dative of personal agent, te helene. So this is, we have been educated by Helen, and that is called the dative of personal agent. Uh, you can still use the genitive of personal agent with the perfect. Uh, Hanson and Quinn will teach you that you can do this with the pluperfect indicative as well. We don't run into that very often, uh, so you really only need to worry about it here. If you have a perfect form, a perfect passive form of a verb and a dative with a person hanging around and you don't know what else to do with it, it's probably the dative of personal agent, so keep an eye out for it. Again, we have covered these when we first learned about the passive voice, and these are two uses of the genitive and the dative that are really quite common and very useful. They also tell you in this section about the dative of means because they want to distinguish it from the dative of personal agent. So if you have the, pe the perfect passive pepideoamatha, we have been educated, but you have dative and a thing, like tois biblios, we have been educated by books. That's not dative of personal agent. There is no person there. That's dative of means. What is it, what got used to teach us, to educate us? In this instance, it's books that were being used, that were the instrument by which we have been taught. So here you get the dative of means. We also can call this the instrumental dative, but I tend to call it dative of means. You may see the jargon instrumental dative um, in other places. To tell you the truth, although this is when Hanson and Quinn formally introduces you to dative of means, we've been using it since unit one. We had a sentence, ha anthropos ton adelphon, logo kai ergo paideoe, way back there, and logo and ergo were both datives of means. When we translated it then just fine, the man educates his brother by word and by deed. This is one of the most common uses of the dative, which is why Hanson and Quinn was using it before they even told you what, it, what it's called. So keep an eye out, of course, for dative of means. It'll happen all over the place, and it's probably... Uh, one of the first things you should try if you have a dative and you're trying to figure out what it's doing in a sentence. And that's it. Concepts you've already heard or read in Hanson and Quinn or in my videos, the genitive and dative of personal agent and the dative of means.